Okay, now you probably see that there are lots of things that you are likely to say uh, that are metaphysical that I'm assuming. But again, I'm drawing everything back from the fact that we get perceptions, and I don't consider that metaphysical because for that to model to work, it requires this uh, uh, organic, real-world, physical place for a cognitive machine to operate. Okay, so even if the brain wasn't a perceptive processor, as I think that it is, it's still a physical thing, right? So how could you say you get something from pure reason when it takes, you know, millions and millions and millions, you know, billions of years of, of evolution to get to this point to build a device which is not a metaphysical device? <clears throat> now you ask me what about my, ex uh, what are these caused by, you know, what are the um, perceptions that I get that I associate with, you know, external objects, what are they caused by? I'm not defining something that causes them. I'm describing what I get. Okay. I'm not describing what causes them per se. I'm describing what I get. So in other words, I don't say there's an external thing and it's causing something. I say that I get these perceptions and I'm going to put my definition on uh, what I, I'm relating those perceptions to. I'm going to call this external. I'm going to say, well, the things that come from the material world, in other words, the consistency of these sense perceptions, now, I use this law of consistency a lot. You could call that a metaphysics. Um, but, no, because I've learned this consistency from looking at the world. I've defined the term consistency by looking at the world. The fact that I even can describe what is consistency versus inconsistency comes from looking at the world and seeing both. Okay, and ultimately digging down and saying, well, it looks like most of the inconsistencies are actually consistencies that I just can't track or predict, but they're actually still following consistent rules. It's not beyond question that the universe is, is, um, is, uh, it, it is, con is consistent. In fact, we have various reasons to think, well, maybe there are areas where it's not consistent, where there really is randomness. Um, so that remains a theory, and it is gathered not by pure reason, but by uh, experience and looking at the world and seeing uh, the consistency. And, um, <clears throat> and yet it's still theoretical, because the nature of this consistency and what it really means is open to question. So, for example, the law of identity, that a thing is itself. Well, that doesn't go too well with the part of the law of identity that implies you need a static, unchanging thing in order to have identity. A has to be exactly equal to A, you know. So the fact that A changes over time, then the law of identity, A equals A, that's supposed to just be for a moment. Like, this cup equals its cup right itself right now, but it doesn't equal itself from a second ago, but it equals itself right now, right now. Right. What use is that definition? Again, it's not that much use, so we're going to have to change it. So if I did this by pure reason and got to a false conclusion, Again, how am I going to test? How am I going to know which, which to go to? Yeah. Perception. Now, you want a metaphysics to explain perception. I don't think you'll ever have that. The perceptions are primary. Okay. But you can't have a physics to explain. You can have a physical model to explain it. And that model, for example, can be this external world. It could be a, a, an objective world. But we find out, well, that's actually relativistic. So, okay, it's an external world. You might call it loosely objective, but really it's a relativistic material world. How do we? How are we going to? Um, how are we going to ever uh, judge our perceptions if that's what we're starting from? See, that's what I believe we're starting from. We can have a model that explains what's coming, but you know, we'll never escape. Right? Is, is am I wrong? Or do you agree? We'll never escape the you know the the brain in a vat problem. So I have this model that explains this. And the model could say, well, it's an external world. Well, my model could be that it's a virtual reality generating these physics. My model could be that we're in, a, uh, we're in God's dream and God's dream is generating the physics. Those will all be functionally equivalent. They'll be functionally equivalent. Uh, well, they're functionally equivalent now and they'll always be functionally equivalent. It's an example reverse engineered to be functionally equivalent and will always be functionally equivalent. So we won't know that. All we'll know is that this is how gravity works. We don't know if it's external. We don't know if it's our dream. We don't know if it's someone else's dream. We don't know if we're in a matrix. We don't, and we never will. And so none of our reasoning should rely on that. 
and you want to have a metaphysics in order to believe in this external world, well then you are going out of your way to artificially make your system rely on something that can never be tested. Okay, and so then you say that there's metaphysics because look, you need these principles that can never be tested. And I say you don't need principles that can never be tested. If you have principles that can never be tested, you can't rely on them to be true because, and this is the most important point, you ask me, well, what do I, how do I judge truth? A true statement is a statement that is consistent with the perceptions that I've had. Okay, so it's true relative to my experiences. Okay. Saying that there's no intrinsic properties of objects, of course, is relativism. I believe there are no intrinsic properties of, uh, of, um, of objects, um, but objects have parts and there are relationships between the parts, but then those parts, again, I believe are systems. And I tend to think that that will go down forever, that in some sense everything will be a system. Um, even if we get to an atomic smallest material particle, those particles are made of energy, you know, the, the reason that the energy is kind of captured in this material form, that will be expressible as a system and so on. You asked things, you, you, examples of metaphysical questions, like what's the passage of time, you know, what's it mean to exist? Okay, to me again, those are scientific questions and or epistemological questions that should be drawn from the starting point of that we receive perceptions. Um, and um, again, you know, strongly, more strongly put, I receive perceptions. Uh, I've been having granted subjective, a subjective point of view to other people, I believe they receive perceptions as well. But, you know, what's the, the passage of time and what's the meaning of that? That's, those questions are answered with pure reason but aren't addressable by evidence? Really? 